Hello and welcome to Delicious Simplicity. On the menu today, we have arichette with pork and broccoli rabi, anise and pine nut biscottis. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to work on is the broccoli rabi. Now you usually see these all that come in in a big bunch like this. And so I've taken them and washed them. I have some water boiling uh, because I'm going to blanch them. They were, as you might know, they were a little bit bitter, so I'm going to um, blanch them to remove some of that bitterness. Some people have uh, actually taken each one of these and, and peeled it and then not blanched it, just, just cooked it. Um, I didn't have the patience to peel each one of this, so um, I'm going to do it the way I usually do it, and that is to blanch them. So I'm going to cut them in bite-sized pieces. Now these are going to go in with the arichette and the pork that I'm going to work on in a little bit. So the water's boiling and you just blanch these for about three minutes. You don't want to cook them all the way through but um, you do want to give them you know a good start. Now this water is going quickly here. Fast boil. So I'm just going to take my these plastic cutting boards and just drop it all in. You can salt the water if you want to. I don't usually, but you can. And like any vegetable or any leafy vegetable, they look like a lot, but they really cook down to, to uh, very little. Push them in. So today we are making the arichette with pork and the broccoli rabi here. And pork, the, the pork that I'm using uh, today is just plain ground pork because I like to keep it a little bit, a little bit on the leaner side. Uh, traditionally, and a lot of people I know use the sausages and they take them out of the casing, mash them up, and um, you know, cook them that, in the skillet that way. Um, I prefer the um, pork and I'll show you in a minute what that looks like. All right, so I'm going to wait for this to cook for a few minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to start working on the biscotti. So what I'm going to do first is get my ingredients ready and then um, with the broccoli rabi. So for the biscottis, I have two cups of flour in here and I'm using whole wheat pastry flour, which is uh, really very good for this um, for this particular recipe. You can use regular all-purpose all flour if you'd like. So to two cups of uh, flour, I'm going to add a, a teaspoon and a quarter of baking powder. So. And I'm also going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to mix this together. And I think by now my broccoli rabi is probably ready. I'm going to drain these out. They look beautiful, nice and green. That's one thing about vegetables that you want to be uh, careful with, is not to cook them too much. Because if you do, then they turn that funny kind of green. So this way they stay really nice and bright. Okay, so since this is the only big pot I have here, I'm going to drain this water out and get fresh water so I can cook the arichette in it. I'm going to make sure I dry the bottom of this pot because you don't want to put a pot that's wet on the stove. There we go. So that's some fresh water for the arigate. And this here is an induction uh, stovetop, so it'll, it should boil really quickly. And when it does, I will add in the arigate here that I have. In the meantime, I'm going to go let these drain and go back to my biscottis. All right, so here I have, the, as I mentioned, uh, the two cups of flour, a teaspoon and a quarter of baking powder, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. So I'm going to set that aside, get a second bowl, and here, this recipe is very simple. Um, 
this is, these are the only two bowls that you need. In here I'm going to add two, um, two eggs. Uh, three quarters of a cup of sugar. So these cookies are not very sweet. Um, so if you wanted to add more sugar, you could, but um, they're, they're not supposed to be very sweet. Um, well, I'm also going to add um, half a cup of vegetable oil. I'm using canola oil, but any vegetable oil will do. So you want to add a half a cup of this. You also want to use um, the zest of one orange. And I'm going to do it here. You can do one orange or you can do um, a tablespoon, which, uh, whichever. I really like the flavor, so I do a whole orange, even if, if, even if it might be more than a tablespoon. And it smells really fresh. You can smell it in the batter. Just gives it that freshness uh, taste. There we go. We got this from Calorisa's Farm Stand and Garden Center. So this is a probably a tablespoon. Sometimes if I don't happen to have an orange on hand, I would use the dry orange peel that you can get at the uh, spice rack at the supermarket. So that goes in there. Then we are going to add two teaspoons of anise seeds. And this is what gives it the, the anise flavor. Um, so they come like this. And we use two, uh, two teaspoons of it. And you, you need to crush them a little bit. So I have one of these that I probably picked up in my travels in New York. Um, but I've seen them around here too. So you can have, have uh, this is a mortar and pestle. And you can, um, you know, buy it in wood or you can get it. I've seen them in, um, um, not porcelain, in uh, what's it called, in uh, marble in some of the local stores. So I'm going to use, this is actually half a tablespoon. It's a little bit, a little bit more than it calls for. So you use two teaspoons. And so you crush them to release some of the, some of the flavor some of the oil in it. Now what's interesting is that even though I'm using the anise seeds here, it, these don't taste like your anise uh, anise cookies. They don't have that strong of, of a, a taste. So they go really well oftentimes with a, a sweet wine for, for dessert or some strong coffee too, which is what we're going to be serving it today with. We're going to serve some espresso coffee, and I'll show you in a minute the old traditional way of making espresso coffee. Okay, so this is pretty much crushed. So those go in. And then I'm going to check my list, but I think that's about it. Oh, one teaspoon of vanilla. Now, just when you think you have everything in it, it's always something. Is a teaspoon. Put a teaspoon of vanilla in here. All right, and then you just mix it. I like to. This is like a whisk. I just bought this this summer when I was in in Greece, and um, I thought it was really neat. And what I like about it is that the the batter doesn't out, get stuck in like in your know, traditional. Like in your know, traditional whisk, because a lot of it, a lot of the batter gets stuck in here, and it's really hard to take out. So I like this because it all comes out. So you mix this. And then you add in your flour, a couple, a little bit at a time. I usually do it in two or three um, pours. And you can really smell the orange peel in here. Ah, and one other thing is the pine nuts. 
I'm going to add those in here too. I almost forgot. So I'm going to add those. That's about a cup of pine nuts. That's the main ingredient. Although I have made them uh, without the pine nuts. And as you can see, this is a takeoff on the biscottis with the almonds. So that's often the case with um, many recipes. You just change a couple of ingredients and you have a whole different dish. And this is a very sticky batter. So many times what I do, instead of rolling it out to make those logs, which we'll end up be doing here too, but instead of actually rolling it out, I'll spoon it onto the baking sheet and form a little uh, log. You make two logs, and then you bake them at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. So at this point, I'm going to switch over to a spoon. See how much easier it is to just kind of get rid of all the, the batter here, clean this out. There we go. I tell you, I use it all the time now. Okay, so I'm going to put this here, and since this is going, I'm going to put the arichetta in. So these arichettas, you can see, they're like the shape of a little earlobe, and that's what it means, little ears. And these are from Calories' farm stand and uh, garden center as well. Actually, most of the ingredients here today are from there. So you can see they look like little, um, little earlobes. And for some reason, these take longer, about 18 minutes. So I'm going to put about three quarters of the package in here, because this is a little more than a pound. And give it a quick stir. Again, you can salt the water if you want to. I don't usually. Uh, it'll be seasoned later on when we mix it with the other ingredients. Okay, so, so the, my biscottis here are nice and mixed. So I'm going to get a tray, baking tray here, and just spoon it, uh, spoon it on and make little loaves. help here with the you want to divide the dough pretty much in half so you don't want one really big and one really small now I'll show you my little trick about how to get them smooth in the meantime I'm going to uh, fill this up with a little bit of water and it's going to help me with smoothing out the logs You just shape these. You could use your hands if you want to as well. I like doing it with the spoon because it makes it nice and, and um, smooth. There we go, that one looks good. And these will spread out. So you might want to put them uh, crosswise too if you wanted to. When I was in high school, I used to work in a bakery in the North End, and this is how, the, uh, how they would do it in, in the, when they were baking. Well, they would use their hands, because they were making so many. There we go. Done. So I'm going to put these in the oven for uh, 30 minutes at 350 degrees. And when they come out, I'll show you how, what they look like. So when they come out, they look like this. One big long, uh, long um, bar and 
to which, um, you know, they're called biscottis, and the reason for that is because they are twice baked. That's what biscotti means, twice baked. They look like this, and I'm going to cut this on the diagonal, uh, make little, little slices, and then put it back on a baking sheet to cook again for about 20 minutes. I'm going to get my pan ready here. Let's see. So I cut this first piece. So I made these ahead of time. And they are typically cut on the diagonal. Um, I think it's just that they look prettier that way. And they look longer. So even if you have like a narrow, a narrow uh, log, you can still give it, give the illusion that they're, that it's longer. And then you take each one, put it back on the cookie sheet. You can see, you can see the little pine nuts in here. And you want to cut them about a quarter of an inch to a half inch thick. You don't want them too thick. All right, so here we have them. And so these will go back into the oven for, tw for about 20 minutes, although I always check at 15 minutes just to make sure. So 350 degrees for about 15, 20 minutes. And so then, then they'll get nice and brown and crisp. And they will come out and they will look like this. We've already plated some. Nice toasted. Um, cookies that you can um, dip in chocolate, which is what I have, thanks to Winfrey's fudge, fudge and Chocolate. I've dipped some of these in chocolate. You could also do icing if you wanted to, but I think there's something about chocolate that can't be beat. So we did that. So we'll put these here in that will be our dessert. And with that, I'm going to make some espresso coffee. And this is the old traditional espresso maker. This is what started at all. And the way this works, this is actually called the mocha, M-O-K-A. It's a mocha coffee maker. And the way this works is that you put the water on the bottom here. I'm going to fill this with water. Then I'm going to put this little basket where the espresso coffee goes in. And you just fill the basket. Because as you know, this is really strong coffee. And this, um, this coffee maker makes about six to eight cups. So you only have a, like a sip. You don't, you don't typically pour very much into a cup. And you have those little demi-tasse cups. And you just screw this on. And so really um, what's happening here is that when the water boils, it has nowhere to go but up that funnel on that basket, and as it comes up, it's actually steam. So it goes through the coffee, and then it, when it comes up, it comes through these, um, this thing that's inside here, and it has holes. I don't know if you can see it, but it has holes here. So as it comes out, the steam turns back into water. Of course, now it turns, it you know, has the coffee in it. So we'll put this on here. Okay, so that's going. So in the meantime, I'm going to start, get back to my arigette recipe. I'm going to um, heat up my skillet. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of oil in here. Just a touch. And here I have my pork, as I was mentioning earlier. Um, you can use the sausages, take them out of the casing. I prefer using the uh, ground pork that you can buy at the supermarket. What I like to do to it is take it out. The earlier you do this, the better, because it flavors the meat more. So I'm going to take it out of here and um, work it out, like knead it a little bit as if I were making meatballs. 
This is beautiful, nice and nice and bright color. I'm going to flavor it with some salt. I'm going to do it with my hand. Maybe probably if you're measuring, I would use a good a good teaspoon. That's about it. It's about a teaspoon that goes in there. And then I'm also going to use some uh, black pepper that I had here. Oh, here it is. And you do want to be liberal with um, the seasoning here. I'm also going to use some red cayenne pepper. I just happen to like this. It gives it a little bit more flavor, a good sprinkling of that. And then at the tail end, I'm going to use some pepper flakes. I'm going to put it here so I don't forget. All right, so I'm going to work this pretty, really good. Keep an eye on my pan here, make sure it's getting hot. I might need a fork for this. I think that will work better. So you can uh, flavor this um, meat ahead of time, which will be nice because it'll, it'll give it more time to absorb all the flavors. All right, so this is ready. So I'm going to put this in the pan, That's sizzling. So just like you, as if you were ground, uh, browning um, ground meat, say for bolognese sauce or something. I think I'll just let it cook for a minute. Okay, I'm going to get my uh, broccoli rabi here ready. So these have been draining. I just want to make sure that I um, get all the water out of it. So I think these have come a good long way here as far as cooking. They're not, it, the meat's not thoroughly cooked yet and you don't want it to be because at this point I want to add uh, the broccoli rabe because I want to make sure that those cook uh, thoroughly. these in here. So now I want to season a little bit more because I want to make sure that the broccoli rabi are nice and seasoned as well and tasty. Uh, I need my salt. So I might want to add about another um, half a teaspoon or a teaspoon of salt. Because remember this is the only seasoning that we're really using. We did not season the water. so. It may seem like a lot of salt, but when this is a, a whole meal, so. And add some more pepper. As I said, you, you do want to flavor the broccoli rabi. And some uh, cayenne pepper here is for the broccoli as well. And I'm going to add the red pepper flakes, just so that I don't forget. Not too much. Again, it is to uh, taste, so if you like it a lot, you can add more. Toss that. You want to make sure that your broccoli rabi is cooked thoroughly. You don't want it crunchy. Um, it just won't go too well with the pasta. So I can hear the can he, I can hear the coffee coming out. If you 
make if you use this coffee maker long enough you'll real you'll get to know the different sound that it makes and you can almost tell when it's done um, I always check though because I'm never sure yeah so this looks like it's done so I'm going to turn that off and just move it out of our way in the meantime now I'm going to drain the um, arricate So I'm going to let them drain a little bit longer. Maybe toss them around a little bit. I actually um, also like to add a little bit of oil at the end here. I'm going to pour about a tablespoon. The olive oil just gives it that gloss to the um, broccoli rabi. We can check and see if they're done by just by squeezing it. Yeah, and this, they look like they're nicely nicely cooked and remember they'll continue to cook okay so now I'm going to combine I'm going to take it off the heat and combine the arricate with it which have really gotten much bigger than what they were before we cooked them I'm going to put these in here and it looks beautiful So here's the plate. I'm just going to plate this. Now, the other thing I'm going to do to it, it may not be the tr traditional thing that's done, but when I make it, make it at home, it always sort of calls for it. So I'm going to grate just a little bit of cheese on it, just a dusting. There we go. Just to finish it up. And here we go. Put this here. So here we have this beautiful, delicious dinner with the arricate and broccoli rabi and the um, biscottis. And we are going to serve them with the espresso coffee. Just a little bit. So we're going to plate this. This is the biscotti dipped in the chocolate. This is a regular biscotti. And they go really a uh, little bit of fruit. And here you have a beautiful, delicious um, dinner or meal. And it didn't take that long at all to make. So thank you again for joining us today. I want to thank Color Resource Farm Stand and Garden Center for the wonderful stuff they provided. Winfrey Fudge and Chocolate for the chocolate. And um, I want to thank you for watching. And also the biscotti recipes will be on my website, livesimplydelicious.com. And also the arichette recipe will be on there as well. So thank you for joining us and do it again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.